continue. So during the, uh, we've entered Hank's favorite season, the season of uh, Ordinary Time, which goes on for a little bit. Uh, and we're going to be using the, um, what has now become the traditional uh, prayers, which were created back in the 1970s, I think, which used to be the innovative prayers, which everybody didn't like because they weren't traditional, but now they're <laughs> traditional. So that's how it goes. Uh, blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless bless you, God, you, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you've given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the first book of Genesis. First, this God created the heavens and earth, all you can see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke light, and light appeared. God saw that it was good, and separated light from dark. God named the light day, and he named it dark night. It was evening, it was morning. Day one. God spoke sky. In the middle of the water, separate water from water. God made sky. He separated the water under sky from the water above sky. And there it was. He named sky the heavens. It was evening. It was morning. Day two. God spoke separate. Water beneath heaven gathered into one place. Land appeared. And there it was. God named the land Earth. He named the cool water ocean. God saw that it was good. God spoke Earth, green up. Grow all varieties of seed bearing plants, every sort of fruit bearing tree. And there it was. Earth produced green seed bearing plants, all varieties, and fruit bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. It was evening, it was morning. Day three. God spoke lights, come out, shine in heaven and stop. Separate day from night. Mark seasons and days and years. Lights in heaven and sky to give light to the earth. And there it was. God made two big lights. The larger to take charge of day, the smaller to be in charge of night. And he made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up the earth and oversee day and night, to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening, it was morning. Day four. God spoke, swarm ocean with fish and all sea life. Birds fly through the sky over earth. God created the huge whales, all the swarm of life in the waters and every kind and species of flying birds. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill ocean, 
birds reproduced on earth. It was evening, it was morning, day five. God spoke, earth generate life. Every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of earth. God created human beings. He created them God-like, reflecting God's nature. He called them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for the fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food, to all animals and all birds. Everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God showed that everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. Heaven and earth were finished, down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day. He made it a holy day, because on that day, he rested from his work. All the creating God had done. This is the story of how it all started, of heaven and earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 8. God, brilliant Lord, yours is a household name. Nursing in the spiritual chorus is about you. Toddlers shout the songs. Turn out and be tall. In silence, take this battle. And drown out and be tall. In silence, take this battle. I look up at your macro skies, dark and enormous, your handmade sky jewelry. Moon and stars have in sense. Then I look at my micro self and wonder. Why do you bother with us? Why, Why take a second look our way? Yet we so narrowly miss being God's bright with Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world, repeated to us your Genesis charge. May the stupids of sheep and cattle, even animals out in the wild. Birds flying and fish swimming, whales singing in the ocean depths. God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world. From the second book of Corinthians. And that's about it, friends. Be cheerful. Keep things in good repair. Keep your spirits up. Think in harmony. Be agreeable. Do all that, and the love of God and peace will be with you for sure. Greet one, one another with a holy embrace. All the brothers and sisters here say hello. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Meanwhile, the eleven disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I've commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord God, may only your word be spoken, and may only your word be heard. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. And good morning. I think Kevin's joined us online in the meantime also. Good to see you, Kevin. Um, so today is the, um, the day in the church year when we're really um, asked to reflect on 
something that you think we are asked to reflect on and that we are every week, but, but what is God? What is God? And the answer that the um, tradition that we're part of, this long tradition of wisdom that produces knowledge that makes us alive, has come up with this formulation called the Trinity. Now, this is, on some level, not easy to understand, and on other levels, the easy explanations that are given to explain it don't help very much. So when I was growing up in Sunday school, the explanation that I got of the Trinity was that it was like water, that water could be frozen in one form, it could be liquid, and it could be steam. And this is the same as the Trinity. It's the same thing, but it appears in three different ways. So for years, the impression that that stuck in my head was that God was somehow connected to an ice tray. <laughs> it just wasn't very helpful. I mean, I don't know about all of you, but an ice tray just doesn't do much. But it was this sort of effort to try to explain on a physical level what ultimately is trying to talk about a supernatural reality, which is that God is love. Now, the thing about love is that it is impossible for love to be solitary. I mean, I guess egomaniacs can sit in a room and love themselves forever, but we don't consider that to be a sign of health or spiritual well-being or something we want to aspire to. When we think about love, we think about being able to love a partner being able to love friends, being able to love our children, our parents, being able to have as a wider society a commitment to love that gets shown forth in things like everybody having enough to eat and everybody having decent health care and everybody being able to love and marry who they are called to love and marry and not having some people tell them that that's not okay. Love means a relationship. And when we say God is love, that's where this whole thing about the Trinity comes into play. Because God is not just sort of, you know, the big old man in the sky with the white beard sitting there. And it's not just Jesus on the earth, and it's not just a good spirit that fills our church and that fills our families and that's part of our friendships and everything good that we value in life, but it is the bond that unites them. It's a force field in a sense, spiritually. It's a realm of being. It's a way of being that connects us. And that's what the Trinity is saying that our understanding of God is not just that it's a single solitary being, but that it's love, and that love is what connects us and what binds us. Um, this is a different way of thinking about God than most of us have been brought up with or taught. Most of us are taught about God in terms of obedience, obedience to a certain kind of figure, obedience to a certain kind of social order, obedience to certain kinds of beliefs. We haven't as much been taught that God, which is the most important thing, is very simply about love. And that love is about the connection that we have with ourselves and with each other and with that which is much, much bigger than ourselves. So when you think about God, for God's sake, don't think about ice trays. <laughs> when you think about God, don't think about sort of individual isolated beings. When you think about God, think about a force field of love of decency, of dignity, of respect, of mutual regard, 
of care, of creativity, of beauty, of majesty. I love the word brilliance that was in one of the readings that we had. Think about that kind of force field. And that's when you're thinking about God. And thanks to Verna for reading one of the longest readings so well. It was really, really good the way you read it. It was excellent. It, it was, that's a daunting one. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, the problem with those long readings is sometimes the way they turn out is boring. So let's, <laughs> let's stand and affirm our faith and our trust in God by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers to people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our friends and friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who are sick, and for the and needy. For the peace and the unity of Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Carly, our bishop, and for all other bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Those who are sick or suffering, those who are mourning the loss of those they love. Hear us, Lord, for, for your mercy is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. This church, for beautiful weather. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of God's Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And to all of us here and those of us online, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. Peace.
Okay, Grace is going to read them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Susan, we're still collecting uh, gender, new or gently used grocery bags for the food pantry, correct? Yes, I bought the ones that we had to the center. And we're, you know, anymore when you're Okay, and I think just as a good general sort of thing to keep in the back of your head, we're going to collect year-round food and food bags. So you may not hear me say it next Sunday, but as you get these items, you know, you can always bring them to the church to be donated. Uh, the treasurer will be don the treasurer will be donating. Yes, distributing quarter one tithing statements. These are to ensure that your tithe is being properly recorded and will be provided quarterly. If there's any issues once you receive your statement, speak with Henry. The uh, mailed one, Susan's, have been mailed at this point. Correct. Also, there's still some to be distributed. Yes, there's still some to be distributed, but the mailed ones went went out in the mail. Okay. Uh, June 11th, we'll be singing Psalm. I said that right, 33 in church. Uh, if you'd like to be part of the choir, just hang out up here. And today is the fourth. Yeah, I'd we, like to add something to that. Go ahead. Next week, uh, I'd like to get my choir, who's going to be my choir, here by nine so we can kind of go over. Here by nine, are you cut? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, that doesn't work. Here by nine, are you singing by yourself the next Sunday? <laughs> And we're not going to make him play it, so we're going to go a cappella. but we had a birthday. It was John's birthday. So let's sing to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. Let us walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us, an offering and sacrifice pleasing to God. Continue with Eucharistic Prayer A on page 5 of the service booklet. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God 
in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, <laughs> almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not have the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the power of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ pours out God's life for you and feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God's peace and presence, which are way beyond our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Christ our Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of all life, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 366, verses 1, 4, and 5.